In this video, we're going to take a look at the scan options in WordFence Security. If you've seen our previous video on running a scan in WordFence Security, which is uh, one of the main features of the plugin, then hopefully some of what you see here is going to be familiar to you. What we can do here is just sort of fine tune the scan uh, to see what it does and doesn't include. Uh, so we're just going to go through these now. The first one you can see, or the first option, is scan the public facing site for vulnerabilities. It's only available to paid members, uh, but it's definitely one of those features that probably makes the plugin worth paying for because unless you're sort of actively looking for any vulnerabilities on the public or front end of the website, then there are probably going to be some that you don't notice. Um, it could be something hidden within the HTML of the actual page being loaded that you might not be seeing. Uh, but yes, as mentioned, it is a paid feature of the plugin and if you do take your website security very seriously, uh, if you can't afford to have your website be taken down, uh, we'd probably recommend uh, looking into that at least. The second option uh, within the scan settings is scanning for the Heartbleed vulnerability. In about May of 2014, there was a Heartbleed bug discovered with certain versions of OpenSSL. It caused a great deal of headache uh, for a, a big number of people wide across the internet. And that's why WordFriends is going to scan for that uh, and that option is already ticked to be enabled. The next three options are about scanning the core files of WordPress, the files of themes that you're using and the files of plugins against the official repository. So that's what's available on wordpress.org or wordpress.com if you're getting your themes from there. It will just check your files versus what the files uh, on the repository actually include. So that if there are any changes to the ones uh, that are on your website, you'll be notified of that because if the changes are going to be made anywhere by an attacker, that's where they're going to be made. So in this particular instance, I'm going to turn on those two uh, to scan against theme and plugin files. Of course, you need to be aware that any additions that you make here to the scans being run will require more server resources and it will take longer for those scans to actually be run. Then we can see what goes on next is it scans for the signatures of known malicious files, the contents of files for backdoors, trojans, and suspicious code, as well as known URLs uh, that are known to be dangerous and any comments left on your website that could have dangerous URLs or suspicious content. These are all on by default. Definitely leave those on. These are the kind of places that people or bots are going to look to insert malicious things in your website so that they can you know, potentially take over and you use your web server for purposes other than what you would like. Then you can see the next scan is for out-of-date plugins, themes, and WordPress versions. It's on by default, leave it on. Just make sure that your website's updated, of course. The next scan is for checking the strength of passwords. It's turned on by default. I strongly suggest leaving that on so that anyone that has an account on your WordPress website has to use a strong password. Uh, it's really the first port of call when we're talking about website security is having a strong password so your accounts can't be compromised easily. The next option is to scan the options table, which is in the database that WordPress uses, uh, plugins, themes, WordPress itself, use uh, the options table to store a ton of data on various bits and pieces of your website uh, just to make sure it runs as you configure it. And this is also the kind of place that attackers will try and put in some code into the database to hopefully, or hopefully for them, uh, get a better grip on your website and be able to make changes as they require, which is certainly not what we want. Next, you can see the ability to monitor disk space. And it's turned on by default, so it'll keep track of how much disk space that your website is using. In some instances, if you don't have your server and the permissions for that set up correctly, which is hopefully very, very, very unlikely, but certainly still possible, people can actually upload files uh, and execute them on your server. And that's a way that many, many people using various vulnerabilities in the past, you know, tens of years have been able to uh, gain access to web servers uh, when they certainly shouldn't have that. The next scan is for unauthorized DNS changes. It's certainly quite possible for DNS servers to be hijacked so that traffic is routed to your server in an inappropriate way. We certainly hope that in this day and age, it's extraordinarily unlikely that this can happen, but it's still possible. Uh, and as such, we strongly recommend leaving that turned on. 
You can also now choose to scan files outside your WordPress installation. I think that's pretty handy because if your web server's permissions aren't set up correctly and people are uploading files to your web server, and even if it does happen to be outside uh, where WordPress typically lies, it's still possible that those files can be run by an attacker. And that's how they might set up their own little service on your server. The same applies for the next option where you can see you can scan image files as if they were executable. It's possible to open up certain images in a text editor and add some code in there in order to hijack a server and make it do things that the attacker would like it to do. Uh, the penultimate option here is enable high sensitivity scanning. As it reports, it says that it may give false positives. As such, we don't recommend using this feature unless you want to be extremely particular about your website security because it could give you a lot of leads that go absolutely nowhere. But of course, at the same time, it may give you the ones that you need uh, that you may not have found otherwise. Finally, we can choose to exclude files from a scan and we can use wildcards here as well. So as per the suggestion, say if you had a database backup on your website, it would most likely end in uh, .sql. So if you add that there, it won't scan any files uh, with the ending of .sql. Similarly, if you're keeping any files that could be called backup or you might even just change the name to be backup, it might be uh, uh, something dot backup or sometimes, you know, some people like to use uh, .bk as a backup file so they can quickly rename it if they're making changes on that server. Maybe you don't want to scan those, so you can just add exclusions there very easily. That brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully you've got a bit of an understanding on how you can fine tune the scan that WordFence is running on your website. And if you're not or you're confused about anything, please feel free to ask in the comments below.